Hi, today I'm going to be talking about how to take this, which is a 3D printed prototype, and get it ready for injection molding. Welcome to another episode. This is the latest version of our model railroad throttle, and I currently have it attached to me, the uh, a lanyard, so that's a, a new feature that I added to this. Let me disconnect that. One of the nice things about these lanyards is that you can easily connect and disconnect them. So now it's disconnected. Anyway, this is the uh, latest version of our throttle. Uh, we made a number of changes. I made a number of changes to the case. Uh, you can see it has a curved top and a curved bottom. And we have 3D printed samples from Shapeways. And you know this also has a new battery door. And the battery door actually works quite well. So. Given this, the next step is to have injection molds made and to have the parts injection molded. What I'm going to do today is take you through the process of getting this design ready for injection molding. And that process is mainly ensuring that I have draft angles set so that uh, we can have a fairly simple mold. One of the things that uh, increases mold cost is having undercuts, uh, which requires slides. Uh, without slides you have a two-part mold and the mold basically comes apart like this and then the part comes out of the mold. If you have undercuts you have the two-part mold like this but then you also have sections that have to slide in from the side and that's how you create the undercuts. So you can see how that would increase the cost of the mold. I've been uh, pretty careful to keep uh, the design so that it will allow the straight pull and uh, what I have to do for the, the finishing, finishing touches is to make sure that all the draft angles are okay. And then I also have to add you know, a little bits and pieces like, uh, as I mentioned, I added the, the connection for the lanyard right here. I added uh, various ribs inside and other details that will make it uh, easier to injection mold. So let's head over to the computer and I'll show you what I've been up to. The last time I think I showed this throttle it wasn't quite ready for injection molding. There are a lot of little details that I needed to work on. One of them is this opening here. Let me show you what that's about. I'm going to isolate this. This is for a lanyard. You can get these cell phone lanyards that have a loop of thread that you can push through here, and then you can put this around your neck. So that way, when you're working on the layout, you can have both your hands free because you can just put the throttle down in front of you held by the lanyard. I've also been adding various other things. So these are pins that hold the keypad in place. If I show the keypad, you can see that there are holes in the keypad itself. So these little pins make sure that the keypad is held in the correct location and doesn't move side to side. There are other things that I've been doing, such as uh, putting some little bosses or ribs like this next to the bosses that uh, hold the screws. These ribs help fill the boss because plastic can come in through the sides as well as the bottom. And they also make the, the bosses a little more rigid. Another thing that I did is we did a revision on the, the circuit board. Before, I had the boss so that it was on the bottom of the side of the circuit board. And the problem with that is it didn't really give much depth for the screws to bite into the boss. So we redesigned the circuit board to allow the boss itself to go through the circuit board. And this therefore allows us to have much more depth for the screws. And that'll make it a much more secure enclosure. I also did a lot of changes on the other side. The bottom you can see now has these ribs here. These ribs are used to hold the circuit board in place so that it's firmly held together. And I did a bunch of work on the, the battery enclosure. So if we look at the, the battery door, it has this uh, profile here that I found on another piece of electronics. I was looking around for an example of how to do this, and this actually works really well. We had these parts 3D printed, and I'm pretty happy with it. I had these two tabs, originally I had one tab, and one of the things I've, I've discovered with this, if I show this again with battery box, is these are actually too close to the battery box. So when I try to put the 
the door in, it kind of rubs against the top of the battery box. So in another revision that I'll show you in a little bit, I moved, actually I'll show it to you right now, show the battery door. You can see that I moved these in toward the center a little bit more to give more clearance. The thing that's important for injection molding is draft or the draft angle. And there's a tool in here called draft analysis. So if I turn that on and say, okay, I want to select this part, now it asks for the direction, uh, show the origin, and then I can click on it there. And I'll hide the origin. Now this is showing in red anything that has a draft angle greater than two degrees. Some of these things I intentionally want to be less than two degrees like these ribs here. So if I change this to one degree, you can see that these now are showing as orange because it's one degree. But there are some areas that I definitely have to be concerned about. So for example here, I don't have uh, any draft on these walls. So I fixed that later on once I noticed that. And then on the side here, I don't have dra enough draft. So that's something I need to fix as well, where these come out. And then uh, I have to do some work with draft here, etc. So this is a really useful tool to find those areas that don't have draft. I see another area here because it's important to fix as many of those as you can in order to make it easy for the part to be ejected from the mold. Now there are certain areas where I have zero draft, like here, and that's because there will be core pins. The core pins provide the holes for the screws and the ejector pins will basically push the part off the core pins. So it's okay not to have draft there. The next step is to get quotes. I've just started the process of getting quotes and in the next video I will give you more information about that. But I'll give you a short version right now. So the case consists of uh, four parts, the, the top half, the bottom half, there's a, a battery door, and then there's a, uh, a thumb wheel which is right there. All of these are custom parts and so we have to have molds made for them. I've looked at two places so far. Uh, one of them is uh, Proto Parts, which has a division called Proto Molds. Uh, they make their parts. It's all done with CNC machining in Minneapolis, I believe, or the Minnesota at, at least. They make their molds out of aluminum. So they're short run molds, which means they're guaranteed, I think up to 10,000, maybe it's 100,000. But uh, I believe it's 10,000. Uh, aluminum is, it doesn't last as well as steel because it's easy to damage them and the material is softer and so they wear out a lot sooner than steel molds would wear out. The cost of getting the aluminum molds was about $20,000 from them and the cost for a set of four parts is about $9 which is more than we'd like to pay. So then we had another uh, quote from a company called Ico Mold. My understanding is that it's a company in Ohio that co-owns a plant in China. So they have some control over the plant. We will own the molds in either case. If we ever want to, we can have the mold shipped back to us in the US. Their quote came in, if I remember correctly, about $15,000 for two molds. Uh, Proto molds was four molds. In the case of Vico mold, they are using mold families. So the top and bottom are in one mold, the battery door and the thumb wheel is in the second mold. And then the per one set of part cost was about $3.30, so a lot less expense than Proto Mold. Now I'm also working on getting one more quote from the company that I used before here in, the, in Washington State to make the blue points and the throttle pockets that are still on the market. Uh, these, by the way, are designed to fit in the throttle pockets, so I think it would be great if we had the same company that makes the throttle pockets also make these uh, molds and to make the parts. I just think that would be great. That's all I have for this week. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, if you like the episode, please click the, uh, the like button below. Also, please subscribe. And if you want to hear about uh, new episodes uh, via email, uh, click the bell down below next to the subscribe button as well. See you next time. Mm -hmm.